And today we're going to be tearing down a Pebble Watch 2. I don't have the original packaging for this watch, but I do have the charging cable. So the charging cable is actually just a modified USB cable. This is a USB type A male. And then on this end, there are two magnets and some pogo pins uh, for power, power and ground, five volts and ground. And the watch itself, it's really nice. It's waterproof um, down to uh, five atmospheres, which is about 130 feet underwater. It's got these cool little spring loaded things to switch out the bands. Could get this off. loaded pin there. Same over here. The watch straps are made from some kind of some type of molded rubber. Feels very high quality, uh, durable and waterproof, sweatproof. Two-toned color going on there. Not sure if that's a second operation or not. So you see here, this is where the charging cable attaches. Two pieces of metal there for the, uh, the magnet to hold on to. And then the two, two pads for the pogo pins for the power and ground for charging. Now it's charging only, there's no data coming across this USB cable. You can see here, this is the sensor for the heart rate. It uh, picks up the heart rate um, when you place it on your wrist. We'll dig into that when we open this thing. On the side, there are some physical buttons. Which actually, I actually liked in a smartwatch. Um, these are covered by some kind of some kind of rubber to waterproof it. Another button on this side look inside there to see what kind of button. This hole, I believe it's for the microphone. This thing was actually pretty cool where you could uh, dictate a text and send it from, from the watch. Of course the screen here, which is a memory LCD screen, so it was super low power and it would uh, display the clock all the time it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't shut off which was a nice feature of this watch let's bust this thing open so you can see there's no screws no visible screws here uh, part of the waterproofing and so this might be a little difficult to get off of here okay that wasn't too difficult open this up you'll see a little flex cable in here connected to the to main board. This cable's for uh, the sensor, heart rate sensor there. You also have a gasket for the back, part of the waterproofing. And pop this, pop this cable off here. Take a look at this. So this is a flex cable with a connector on the end sometimes called a rigid flex because part of it's rigid, the rest of it's flexible. You've got your charging pins there, which are actually, let's see. Yeah, they're, they are, they're pogo pins on this side too. So it went from a pad, it's actually the full, this is actually the full pin pogo pin lays on these pads on the main board here. So inside of here, they glued in this, this heart rate sensor. I'm just going to break that 
glue hold there, cutting it. Let's take a look at the sensor here. This metal piece is probably a shield. They have the sensor on the flex cable as well, so that's the rigid flex side. You can see this is the this is the, sen the sensor in the package here. They got a couple of capacitors on there. Um, and then this this goes and talks to the to the main board. So this piece is uh, it's one piece of plastic injection molded. Looks like they have some kind of epoxy in here to hold these these pogo pins in. Actually, not sure what these bosses are for here because the screws are on the the main board here. Main board is held in with three screws. One, two, three. Super tiny screws. Here's the battery. You see that the battery is almost the same size as the entire uh, PCB. So it's a real a real fine balance between battery size and and, and battery life. This watch uh, on one charge lasted seven days, which is pretty good for a smartwatch. See here, there's there's some manufacturing stuff going on here. So this this label, it's a QR code. It's, it'll probably be unique to this this particular, either the assembly or the or the PCB itself. Here you have the uh, eccentric motor, so it, this had vibration to it, and with these little these motors, there's a uh, a mass on the end of a little tiny motor um, that's off centered and gives you that vibration. So it looks like this motor is just soldered onto the board. No connectors there. But let's take this board out of here. Two different size screws. One's longer than the other two. So the, bat the battery is held in place by some double-sided tape or glue and the motor is held nicely in place by this metal bracket. This obviously is meant to be worn on your wrist and if you're active you don't want this stuff flopping around in here. There's two other ribbon cables in here. Taking a look at the main board here. Got the battery of course, the eccentric motor, both soldered on directly. There's no connectors there. So this saves this saves cost and space. Uh, you just have the cost of labor to solder those on there. The main side here, I believe this is the processor uh, ARM Cortex M4, I believe. This chip here not exactly sure what it is. I think it's more memory. And then you have, of course, the pads for the the charging cable. This this little spring-loaded contact here, I believe, is for ground to uh, touch the the metal metal shield covering the the screen. This is an ambient light sensor. This chip I'm not sure exactly. A lot of supporting electronics around it, passive components. This is the connector for the for the heart rate monitor. So one thing I want to note on here is that there are no reference designators. So no U numbers to indicate an IC or C for a capacitor or an R for a resistor. And I believe they did that to save space because when you have all those uh, silk screened letters and numbers on there, it actually can expand your board and make your board bigger than you want. And since they are trying to fit this inside of a watch, it seemed important to them to, uh, to remove those in order to fit everything nice and tight in here. It makes it a little more difficult for troubleshooting, but uh, if you have a good test procedure for this or a test jig, uh, it's not too important, but early on testing, it's easier to 
to diagnose issues when you know which part you're looking at using a reference designator. Here we have the Bluetooth chip, system on a chip, with the, uh, the oscillator there. And I believe the antenna for this part is on the other side. I believe this is the antenna here. I don't see a chip antenna on there and I don't see anything else that indicates um, on the PCB itself that it's an antenna. So this um, strange looking thing, thing over here is probably the antenna. I believe this here is the, the microphone because it's in the exact place where the hole was in the, in the front. On the other side, you have all four tactile buttons for the user interface. These are connectors for the uh, screens. This is called a zero insertion force connector. Basically, you slide your, your ribbon cable in there and then this locks it in place. This one's covered by some kind of padding. And over here is the uh, accelerometer for this watch. Uh, detects steps and activities and things like that. Here, I believe this is a proximity sensor. And then some interfacing electronics there. Not sure what this is. These look like they might be some test points. And again, another one of these spring-loaded contacts for ground. A lot of little tiny parts on a little board. Got to fit it inside this smartwatch package. Moving on to the top half of the watch where the screen is. This might be some kind of shield. You have your bosses on here, your tapped bosses to hold the screws to hold the main board on. This is uh, where the eccentric motor was. This is where the battery was. You have your, your rubber piece here for the tactile buttons for the user. Take this out of here. So this is the actual screen module. It's like a single piece. And this metal piece is just adhered to the back of it. So this part is the e-paper or e-ink display. It's got its own cable here. These displays are, are really cool, especially for low power wearable things. Um, it typically has only white or black pixels. And when you display something, you can actually remove the power and it still displays your image and basically pulls no power at all. So these are really great for, uh, for displaying static images or when you need to refresh it at a low rate. The refresh rate on these things are not as quick as a, uh, you know, a high-end OLED TV or something like that at a, you know, 60 hertz or 120 hertz. But uh, these things will do the job for, for time, for example, which this uh, watch did. And also, it looks, uh, you know, they call it e-ink or e-paper because it looks pretty close to, to what you can see on a, a printed page and doesn't reflect, and so it's easy to read in sunlight, which is another great feature for this watch. This one may be displayed over the top of the e-paper display. It's a bit transparent. It doesn't look easily removable. But this is the other half of the watch from a mechanical standpoint. It's another piece of plastic, the black part. And then these red parts with the with the rubber over coats here for the tactile buttons. Looks like it's popped in in a separate operation. It's a pretty simple construction, but a very smart watch. A lot of thought has gone into this design, especially to make it compact and do everything that it did. Okay, so I have all the pieces here. We have the charging cable, the, the top half of the watch with the uh, screen inside, the e-paper screen with this metal piece to hold the uh, eccentric motor and uh, the main board down, the back piece which has the pogo pins for charging, 
and the place where the the heart rate sensor goes gasket for waterproofing the actual heart rate sensor on a rigid flex cable which connects to the main board there's only three screws not a lot of adhesive either so a pretty simple design when it uh, when it comes to assembly pretty interesting there and then of course the main board with the battery eccentric motor and the main board with all the the user facing uh, buttons on there and everything for the smartwatch and of course the watch bands made of some kind of molded rubber great product a simple design for a smartwatch uh, very well designed thus concludes the teardown of the pebble watch 2